In this video you will learn how to create realistic terrain and rocks. For this we will first generate a simple base geometry, then create several displacement shaders to add details and finally use various procedural methods to blend everything together. So in this video we're going to be discussing on how we can generate this interesting looking structure in here. And this is done in a kind of procedural way where basically we just have a very simple base geometry and then all of the surface details, all of the grass, everything is just added procedurally during render time. And in this video we are discussing different kind of methods to generate these kind of like procedural terrains in here. So as usual you can always find the scene files together with additional add-ons on my Patreon. And if you're interested in the ocean material, this is not part of this tutorial right here, but there's a own dedicated video that basically covers this topic, which you can also find in my channel. So before we start, let's first check out something that I found on Instagram that kind of inspired me to build this tutorial. So here on this Instagram account, 1000 words, which are also gonna link in the description of the video, I found this interesting little video where you can see this kind of nice procedural terrain effect where you just build a very simple structure that you can see up here and then all of those details here are added in a kind of procedural way. You can see you have some nice displacement and normal maps here going on and this one here would be the shader tree for this kind of example. I thought I will just simplify that a little bit and to just show and teach you the techniques that I use to generate this kind of result. So back in 3ds Max, this one here would be the end result. And as you notice, probably I scattered some grass here additionally on the top. So let's just hide that for now that we can just see the shader itself. And now without the grass, you can see I still have this kind of like green grass material here at the top. And I have different kind of rock materials here going on on the side of the surface together with some displacement that all just nicely blends into each other. So let's first check out the base structure that I'm using here to generate this kind of effect. And let's start from bottom to top. You can see it's a very simple structure. I just have this super rough geometry here that you can see was just generated with some very basic box modeling. And I think something like this everyone is able to build. And then I just added some symmetry modifiers so that I don't have to build the other side. I added a little bit of turbo smooth on top and then some procedural noise here to just roughen up the surface a little bit and make it look less perfect. And lastly, I'm just using a V-Ray displacement modifier here to generate all of the kind of details that we need on the surface. So for the V-Ray displacement modifier, I'm not gonna go through all of the different settings in this video because you can find a own dedicated video in my channel that deals with all of those different settings here in much greater detail. But breaking it down, I'm just using a subdivision type I'm using the amount of 50 centimeters for the scene and I'm using negative and positive displacement. And then most importantly, I'm using the object material. That means I'm not loading any texture map directly into here, but everything is done through the shader. So the displacement is piped directly in the shader, which you also will see in a second. And that's basically the setup for our geometry and everything else is done with the shader itself. So when talking about procedural terrain generation in this context, I don't necessarily mean that every single part of our shader has to be done 100% procedurally. For example, we're still gonna be using textures here from the Quixel Megascans asset library, and we're just gonna procedurally place them on our surfaces. So this has certain advantages. We can just download here surfaces from the Quixel Megascans library. And let's just find, for example, here some rock surfaces and then go in this cliff category. And then you can find lots of different rocks in here. And I just downloaded, for example, this one in here. And if we go to the download settings, I just choose a 4K resolution and then in the download settings themselves. We can just choose what kind of texture maps we want to download. And in our case, we definitely need an albedo map and then a displacement map. And for the displacement map, make sure that you use this EXR map in here. 
So back in 3ds Max, you can see I downloaded here a bunch of different textures from Quixel Mega Scans. And here is the rock structure that we just saw in Quixel Bridge. And then I applied a simple color correction to just boost the contrast a tiny bit. And I have a second rock structure in here. And I also applied a color correction to make both of them appear here more similar. And then those two maps here, those are the respective displacement maps for those two different rock textures. And then I have a third texture that I downloaded. And I just use a little bit of green color to just tint this part here a little bit because this part here will become our grass that we're gonna place on the top of this rock structure in here. So speaking about the rock structure, as you can see here, this one just has this dummy shader applied to it that at the moment just has this gray diffuse material. No displacement, that's why all of this, what you can see here is just coming from the base structure plus some turbo smooth plus a little bit of procedural noise added on top of it. So now as a first step, we're gonna be placing our rock structure into the dummy shader. We're gonna ignore those ones here for now because those will be layered in later. So we're just gonna connect our diffuse map to the diffuse map of our shader. And then you're gonna see we have now our diffuse map showing up on our structure. But as you can see, it's completely stretched because we don't have any UV coordinates. We also don't want to generate any UV coordinates by hand because this would mean for any kind of different rock structure and so on, we would always need to do this step by hand. So instead, we're gonna use a procedural approach where we just gonna use our V-Ray bitmap. And then in the mapping source, we're gonna add a V-Ray triplanar texture. And then once we do this, we can in the triplanar texture define the size of our texture. For example, like 200 centimeters. And now you can see that this texture here is added in a procedural way on our surface without having to generate some UV maps first. We can now further optimize our triplanar texture by playing with this blend attribute in here. As you can see, there's some parts, for example, here, where the blending of the triplanar texture doesn't really work very good and the transition seems to be very sharp. So in this case, we can just increase here this blend value to, for example, a value of 0.5. And as you can see now in a second, this line here will be a bit more smooth and the transition here happens a little bit more organic. So we can further randomize the placement of the texture by just using a V-Ray UVW randomizer because as you can see here there's this structure which always seems to be repeating itself and for this we can just add a V-Ray UVW randomizer in the triplanar texture and then inside here we could just use a stochastic tiling and I don't need a UV rotation. Let's just remove this UV rotation, but we have a random offset of U and V between zero and one. And that now means that these kind of rock patterns here are placed in a much more random fashion. So now that we took care of the placement of the texture, we can just easily use the same kind of placement for our displacement map. So let's just connect our triplanar into the mapping source of our displacement map and then also connect the displacement map into the displacement slot of our shader. And now you can see we have some displacement going on. At the moment it's way too strong. So we can just reduce this displacement percentage for example to something like 25%. And now you can see we have some nice and interesting rock structure here already going on. We still need to add some reflection. So let's put the reflection value here all the way to pure white. Now we just need to use a glossiness map. We could either use the roughness map from Quixel Mega Scans, but in this case, I will just use a color correction map of the albedo map and then just put here the gamma to a value of three. So just brighten up this texture and desaturate it and then just connect this into the glossiness slot. And by this way, break up the glossiness of our shader a little bit. So as you can see, we already have a nice, interesting rock shader here going on. We have some nice displacement 
and a nice texture map and broken up the glossiness a little bit. And now we can work on our second rock material. So now that we're finished with our first rock shader, let's clean it up a little bit. Let's enlarge this preview image in here. And then we can just also minimize this one in here so it doesn't take so much space away. And now we're gonna work on the second rock structure. So for this, let's just duplicate our shader in here. Let's just put it down here and remove these input connections. So we start from a fresh state. Let's also call this one here then rock two. And now we can start piping in those textures the same way like we did in this one in here. For this, let's also easily just duplicate these triplanar nodes and UVW randomizer. And let's choose, for example, a smaller value of 100 and then pipe this into the mapping source of our texture and also into the mapping source of our displacement map. Now we can just assign this shader to our rock structure. And as you can see now, nothing happens yet because we first would need to pipe those textures into here, for example, the diffuse slot and the displacement slot. Now we also need to connect our diffuse map into this color correction. And then this color correction is already connected to our glossiness. And let's just choose, for example, a slightly different glossiness here by using a gamma of two. So now you can see we have a very different rock shader compared to the first one. We have a much smaller structure in here and much more small details. And now in the next step, we have to basically blend these two different shaders here together to place them in an interesting way on our rock structure in here. So for this, I cleaned up this shading graph a little bit and I also generated two dummy materials from our rock shader. So you can see this one is the rock shader we just built earlier. And I just built exactly the same shader using the same displacement, but with a very distinctive color so that we can very easily see where the blending is happening. And the same is true for this shader here. So this one is the original shader that we built earlier. And then this one here is a very red version of the shader using the same kind of displacement just that we're able to see better how and where the blending is happening. So now let's add a V-Ray blend material into our shading graph and for this let's put our red shader here as the base material so that is our bigger rock structure and then once we assign this to our geometry, you can see we have exactly the same result because at the moment we're just using this shader in here. But what happens if I add the second shader and put this into the code material? You can see that now we have a 50% blend between those two different shaders because we use this color value which is set by default to 128, so 50%. But if I move this all the way here to white, then we only use our code material. You can see this whole structure here becomes completely blue. And if I move it all the way to black, then we only use our base material. You can see now the whole structure here is completely red. So instead of using this color value, let's use a map in here. And for this, we're just gonna use a standard 3ds Max falloff map. Let's move it down here. And then we can see here in this preview already, by default, this fall of map is set to the viewing direction of the camera. So that means we have a gradient transition from the center to the edge of our geometry. And instead of this, we're gonna use the world Z axis. That means we check where our model is and which of those faces are pointing upwards. And then we're gonna mask this instead of the perpendicular parallel fall of type, we will use the towards a wave fall of type so that the blending is only happening on one side. And now we can also switch these two different color maps so that we inverse the placement. You can see now we start to get some interesting result already. We have this smaller structure that's happening here at the top of our surface and then this reddish or bigger structure which is happening here more on the side of our surface. And instead of using this very like linear mix curve, we can basically boost this transition here 
or make the transition a little bit more defined and in this way you can see that now we have this kind of like reddish material here on the side this kind of like other material here at the top and i think this gives already a quite nice result so now instead of using these two dummy shader we can easily replace them with our real material now you can see we have these two different rock structures here blending with each other in this case i think i will reduce this one here by 50 percent so that our second rock shader is not so obvious and we have more of those bigger structures here appearing so now the only thing missing is some grass so i just built a grass material before using the same kind of workflow like we did for the rock shaders and you can see the grass shader in here so let's assign our blend material again and then put this grass into the second coat and then i also have a second fall off here prepared that also use the same parameters like the first one so towards away and wall z axis but i use a slightly different mix curve in here and i also added a noise into this color value in here that just uses some very simple 3ds max procedural noise in order to break up the placement a little bit and now let's put this fall off into the blend amount for our grass and now we can see that we have some nice grass here on top of our rocks and now everything works quite well together so now as a last step i will just use some grass to put on the top or on these grass areas that we defined earlier and this is just a very simple chaos getter i have my own dedicated video by the way about the chaos getter plugin how to generate these kind of effects so i'm not going to go into details but in this case you will see that in the map here for the scattering i just use this fall of two the one that i just used in order to place this grass texture on the rocks and i use the same kind of fall off here for the placement for the grass so with this it concludes this tutorial you can see we have a fully procedural approach where we have these kind of different rock structures here appearing on our geometry that doesn't use any uv coordinates and we also have some grass that's being scattered on top of this and if everything comes together it can give you a quite convincing and realistic result so using this kind of approach you can easily transfer this whole shader and grass setup to any kind of surface or geometry that you have in your scene and you will always get a quite realistic and nice result without having to deal with any kind of uv texture maps and so on because everything is defined here by those rules that we set up in the shader itself if you like this kind of content chances are that you also enjoy the content that i provide over on my patreon where you can download all of the scene files for all of my tutorials and also watch a full course on car shading so you can check out this if this has any additional value for you otherwise see you in the next tutorial take care and see you soon